The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, folks. This is Basil Chapman sitting in again for Larry. Larry will be back, I believe, Monday. I actually got to speak to him for a moment this morning, and his voice was much better, but it's still very, very scratchy. At least he's come down from being a falsetto to at least a, kind of a tenor, and that's good. So um, sitting in for Larry, let's do a bunch of things that, that – I, I, I usually see Larry covering, so we'll do it uh, in my methodology, but we'll do it nevertheless. So the Dow right now is down uh, 269 at 34,832. Just uh, briefly for those of you who may be new to my work, just want to show some patterns. These are the patterns that I look at. There's a pattern where price goes up and then it starts to pull back. And if there's a little trigger to say that maybe there's a little doji candle or something that says, okay, now you can start to make lower highs and much lower lows, what I do is I call this uh, a falling axe formation. To be sophisticated, I should really call it an expanding cone formation, uh, but then, or declining expanding cone formation or an inclining, but too many words. So, falling axe, what we're looking at is here's the handle, there's the lower highs and much lower lows. At some point, it just suddenly finds some support and then it turns around and it makes either a cup or a v-shaped pattern takes out gets repelled at this line this resistance line which we've just seen right there we saw it over there as well back at 36169 back in uh, mid december got pulled back to a support line and then it ran higher then it did it again with a, with a pattern i call the dreaded h and look now you've got this, what I call the chat wave inside track, because within the trend line down, I drew another very thin little line, just straight up. These are so easy to do. You just, you just click your button. And what happens is that says that becomes a repellent zone. If price starts to move higher and then closes above that and cheats the line that was resistance as support, you can get a one-to-one -one expansion to the upside going towards the left side high or a previous major peak. In this case, a, a really good move to the upside says you could go to maybe the, uh, in this particular instance, the 36,100 area. No, that's really asking much. I'm just thinking the 35,000. 800 to 35,900 35, is kind of the cap on this particular move to the upside if it manages to do that. And that would be very important, the same angle and the same uh, price extension if you can do that. All right, let's get out of that. Now, what's really important about this is that the support, look at the 200 period moving average. I know it's sacrosanct to, to be a sacrilegious to be talking about moving averages in Larry's show, but Larry understands all of us have our own techniques and we just use them as, as, as well as we can. And that's our benchmark for, for, for the, one of our tools that we use. So in this particular case, look, it went right to exactly the 200 period moving average. It never does that. So when it does that, you've got to respect it. Look, the last time that the Dow did that, uh, I, I don't want to go back. It was a long time ago. I think it was back in... March of 2020. Yep, there it is. Here we go. There we are. The low that was made. Stop. Thank you. Stop. Right there. October. Um, that was October of 2020. It had gone on the low that we made back in. Yeah, just look how important it is. Look what happened at the low that was made when Larry was calling for the low of March of. Um, let me go back. Yeah, I just wanted to show you this. Look how it became resistance in that whole area back in June, July. If I can ever figure out what year this is. Let me just click it. On. Oh, right there. 2020. And you remember, we got long the, the low of March the 23rd via options and then via the diamonds, which we actually still have some part of it um, at that from that low of um, 2020. So that was a March. But look 
how that became resistance for months, two, three months. And then all of a sudden became support and it ran all the way to 29,199 in September. And then it came back to where the 200 period moving average. Then it ran up to 28,957 October, the uh, around about the 12th of of uh, October 2020, and then it went down below the the uh, 200 period moving average, October uh, the, the 30th of 2020, at 26,143. And what did it do? There was an island reversal, which we've never filled in, have we? I don't think so. Um, and that was it. And it took off. And it took off. And it took off. And we haven't been there since. And that's the reason why I'm saying. This is going to be really important. I keep moving it, and you can see it just moving to the right. Here we go, using the roller, and here we are. It hit it on the exactly on the uh, 1st of December at 34,022, spiraled up to the all time high of 36,952 on the 5th of January, and boom, comes down to the, on the 24th to 33,150 underneath, and then for six. For six sessions, it traded underneath and then went above. It is so important. The chances are we're going to be testing the 34,567, 200-period moving average at some point. What I wanted to see is some kind of a pattern, and I'm going to do this because I did it in my, my show, The Tiger Technician's Hour, a few moments ago, to say, oh, I just did the Dow, to show that the pattern I'm anticipating, that was the question I had, from a subscriber, from a tiger and subscriber. Here we go. You've got, uh, the yesterday we had a call and I went through the S&P and I said, the pattern I'm anticipating, and of course it's just something that I'm anticipating based on experience because the chart formation up until yesterday was saying one thing, I need to see where we close today to see if there's any change in that, that we're going to have a pattern that I call and now I need to show you the sign right here. The lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m. So that means straight line down and arch formation. And that arch formation could take out the left side low. But if it's an arch formation that holds quite nicely towards the midpoint of the arch and then has another arch like a lowercase m. Lowercase h goes to a lowercase m, meaning you're trading in a trading channel, sideways channel, a trading band, a rectangle formation. So that's what I'm thinking, that there's just enough strength continuously to say you got a little bit higher, you've got a cap on the upside, but you can push to the upside. This Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, this falling axe formation, has... Uh, resistance, now the resistance is much tougher to get to uh, at 4572 to 4598 in the S&P. But I'm suspecting that somehow or other we make another arch formation and then there's suddenly uh, the news, I mean rates, uh, uh, crude oil, Everything comes together to say, oh, my God. And you get this plunge below the 200-period moving average of 44.06, and you start trading in the 3970s. And next thing you know, oops, 42, sorry, 44.06. Yeah, then you, you break under 44.06, you trade in the 4370s, and if that fails, you go down to retest 422.62. So that's the pattern I'm looking at, sideways for a little while longer, and then suddenly there's a bigger dip. I'll be back. How's the chapter sitting in for? You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Oh, a little Mozart, nothing like Mozart. Uh, back when I was a professional musician, conducted many Mozart uh, pieces. All right, let's get back to our story. Uh, we've got uh, the gold contract up a dollar and a half at 1805. So my contention is that if the bulk of trading over a period of time, period of bars, it could be, uh, it could be anything. I mean, look at this. Uh, you're looking at... Look at this. We went in the E-mini after the big Amazon spike yesterday, straight after the bell. Look how long we stayed in basically a rectangle formation. And the rule of thumb is it should go, if it's on the upside, it should go slightly to above, one little break above. And then if it breaks the, um, the, re the rectangle base low, be really careful because it'll have, if it does it quickly, what happens is, It'll have one quick rally back again. It's like it forgot to say goodbye to some of its friends. It says goodbye, and then whoof, it continues down. So now it's got a big, large arch formation. You've got a left side, right side price. There's the 10-minute E-mini uh, S&P. You've got to do that peak D doji candle. I like that. You've got a plumb line, and that takes you to the right side. And in a price time match, it just broke a little bit, a, a couple of bars before. It broke down, went back. Up and then it went down. Now it's got the large arch formation. What happens? Are the technicals going to improve over the next hour or two? We'll see. So here we go. I just want you to do that and then go back to this because we're looking about a rectangle formation. This is different in the sense that I've chosen the most number of bars that were in the range. And I just grabbed my rectangle and trade stations easy to do. Whoop, and I put it across. And that just says that if gold at some point in the next week and after two weeks you've got to give it two full bars from this bar right here because this is the Chapman Wave Inside Track Propellant Zone. Look how it's held so beautifully um, and that that just says look at the nine period moving average which is still positive. It's green over the black. That's good. Look at the MACD kind of pulling back but it's still positive barely. Uh, look at the stochastic very poor at 45%. On balance volume says a tad overbought funnily enough but still quite good. And that's just price is the arbiter of a trend. You have to look at the price moving higher. Well, if the price is going to move higher, it's got to get out of the rectangle. It's got to go above 
the high of the week of uh, 3rd of September, 1841, it has to start trading for a full week and close above. It can't just pop and, and break down, which it keeps doing both upside and downside. And if it does that, you would want to see silver. You want to see the two go together. And silver chart pattern is just horrible, which it often looks before it has a really good move to the upside. And that says in the weekly chart, it's actually broken the potential. Well, I can elongate it just for now. It's just real simple. At 22.40, up 0 0.02, just 0 0.02. I mean, that's nothing. But it is a, a long-legged doji candle. It says that at any point in the next session, that's uh, Monday, I usually give it two sessions, but by Tuesday, if it can close above today's high of 22.69, that turns the the candle, the open and close of the doji candle, the day's young, anything can happen. But at this point, 22.40 into support. If it closes underneath, it turns that 22.40 level into resistance. And I keep it as simple as possible. I've got three or four candles that I use. One or two I've made up my own. They are my own candle notation. One is a Chapman Wave Roman candle. Um, don't have to discuss that now. It's not as important. Um, well, there is one right there just off the top on uh, the 25th. That's a Chapman Wave Roman candle. And the rule of thumb is if it break, if it closes on a shorter time period, that would be the 120-minute chart. So it's a daily chart. If it holds the midpoint for more if it goes under the midpoint of the long wick at the bottom, that would be 2380. Uh, for more than, I usually say, 90 minutes, if it's a 120-minute chart, um, there's a real good chance you're going to take out the left side low. And wow, did it, because it went all the way to 22 yesterday, 21.98. So there's a lot of work to be done. Oh, and this is a Chapman Wave Roman candle right here. So it didn't hold the midpoint at the bottom, at the bottom, it usually works for the upside action. And that actually confirms exactly what I was talking about, about this long-legged doji. So it's the same thing. A close above by Sunday night or Monday, if you start to see a big move in silver, that's going to be a good sign. It says 2288, the 14-period moving average, and then the 50-period moving average of 2311. That's what you're looking at. You just don't want to see a break below 20, 2180 at any point in the next two days. All right, so now I want you to cover something else, Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is having a really good day today. Uh, it's up 3,450, and in in, this is the future, is at 39,700. Uh, and what's really important now, this is very interesting for subscribers to my opening call. We were long, uh, way back, I mean, we were long via the GBTC, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly the date. Was that October? Uh, let me do. Uh, yeah, that was October the 14th, 2020, at 12.48 and 12.41 via the GBTC. So you can just say the equivalent is 12,400s. Um, and then we took profits on the way up and even on the way down, but we, we took huge profits. And then we just kept a tiny bit. And the only reason why we wanted to keep a tiny bit is because although we had sell signals, I just. It's very difficult. I don't do this with the futures for my subscribers, but we do it through the GBTC, which is the Bitcoin Investment Trust. It only trades intraday. So you make a mistake. Overnight, you can wake up the next morning uh, and you're, you couldn't even have a stop because it, you know, it, it won't even be hit. So what's really important about this is that um, what we're looking at is it's trying to form a base. And this rectangle in the GBTC is a little bit more um, informational for me than is the Bitcoin in the sense that the Bitcoin futures are making stair-step moves of one bar up for leg A. It's still gray leg A because the stochastic isn't over 80%. The MACD is good, but it's not just okay. The nine period is way under the 14 period. So this is a bounce as far as I'm concerned. But what's really important is it pulls back for three days and then it breaks to leg B. It becomes a peak B the next day because the two bars pull back. And then it breaks to a higher by, by one tick. It goes higher. That starts leg C. It's in leg C. This particular pattern, now I drew the big one when I was doing my show a moment ago. I usually like to start off with a small rectangle and say, this is probably the, the what we're looking at here. That's the, that's the range we're looking at. And that says it could go to the 41,000 level. 
But most importantly, sustainability is going to be really key. And I like stair-step moves, but you don't want it to turn into the H pattern. In other words, you don't want to suddenly fail, although getting to a C is good. A failure at an A or a B says you're probably going to test the left side low. In this case, it certainly went to the C, but just barely. So look at all the effort it's taken to go to a peak A, a peak B, a peak, uh, whoops, a peak C, a leg C. Get click there. And uh, it's just saying it's trying to form some kind of race. However, last week was a green candle. Today's a green candle with a higher high. You got the V-shaped pattern in the uh, in the weekly chart in the on balance volume. You got the stochastic under 10%. Now it's at 10%, 10.30. The MACD histogram is just finally starting to improve. So I'll put that together for Bitcoin in the daily, weekly, monthly charts. As soon as I return, this is Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento's show, and I'll be back in a moment. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, well, folks. We're back. So this is, let me just show you this. I was asked about Ethereum. I'm going to include that here and just say, look, I love to just take the outer, outer levels of the bars and try to make a channel. If it works, and if it works, it works. And what happens, uh, I go to one, and then I click on, and it gives you parallel. And if it fits exactly, how how more exact could this be? This is Ethereum trading at 22.02 up 2.35. And that says, now you've got, uh, these lines are the Fib9 lines. I like to do that every once in a while. I'm just going to take them out now. 
uh, for the moment because I got other things that, oops, take that out. Oh, I put that in separately. All right, doesn't matter. Yeah, so what we're looking at here is that within the context of um, within the context of this down channel, I could do this very easily. Look how simple it is. I do about three sixteenths of an inch or maybe a, an eighth of an inch or something like that. There's no fixed rule because you have to go by the chart itself. And I say, hey, that's the resistance that needs to be taken out. It's never been broken since the top that was made and not the actual top. The, the, the last high was on the 10th of November at 47.40. And then you got the double top. These double 47.08 within less than a point of one another. It's just incredible how many stocks we've seen um, are make these double tops. In fact, I, I, I have to do this because I'll forget. I wanted to do it before. Look at this. Uh, CVX. This is CVX is Chevron Corporation, multinational oil company. It makes a 137. I always look at round numbers. Ever since, I, I'd always looked at it, but the crash of uh, two, uh, October the 19th, 1987, just confirmed for me how important round numbers could be. There were so many round numbers in general modes, just you could name all the, the Dow stocks that I, I, there was just no way there couldn't be a major turnaround, which there was within within a day. So um, 137, but it acts differently now that it's all automated. So to see automated with someone saying, I want out at 137, and they get out for a peak D in the Chapman wave, D is the fourth highest peak, that's where you've got to be careful, at 137.00 on the 27th of January, pulls back and then has an inside like a rectangle formation or a v-shaped pattern and it goes to where 137 the height today exactly to the penny i mean i'll talk about it when we get back because it has to do with crude oil i'm going to get to crude oil in a moment i'm just talking about bitcoin at the moment crude oil is in leg d broken above the channel high but it's intraday. We'll see what happens by the close. So now let's go back to what we were looking at, ETHE. And I was saying, here's your channel. Now what needs to happen is the MACD is positive. Stochastic is horrible at 35%. It needs to rally. The on-balance volume is terrible. The nine-period moving average is still under the 14-period moving average. You want to see, and this is peak A, leg peak B and leg C is the same as Bitcoin right now, but it's actually a much weaker pattern. A, B, C. I'm suggesting to you that Bitcoin to break out, Ethereum has to go to 2550 and hold there for a full week above that, for a full week, and then I'd say great. That's a low. That's a tradable low. We'll go to um, the Bitcoin futures trading now. If I can type it in the right place, Bitcoin futures. BTC uh, improved at 39.40. It's up 10% right now at 42.90. This is a good start. And what you want to see, MACD is okay. Stochastic is improving at 45%, still very weak. There's a relative strength signs. Finally, the relative strength is starting to improve. On balance volume is very weak. So what I'm looking at here is you're going to have a whole week's worth of trading. If Bitcoin doesn't take out and, and for subscribers this is where we want to activate you remember i had that uh, uh say, is it a single digit i think single digit stock that emulates exactly what we're looking at in the bitcoin we might just use that as a proxy and for inexperience almost like an option we might trade that okay this coming week but in the meantime you want to see this leg c you don't want to get to a d you want this leg c to continue higher into sunday night then Monday morning, and by Tuesday or Wednesday, you want to see a close above the high of the 20th of January, the 43,560 high. This is the continuous contract of the Bitcoin futures. And you want to have this leg C. You could have gone to a D by then, but this leg C must have stored here, pull back for Monday, and then make a D, just a nominal D. Actually, it's eh, stuck in a range. You're going to be back in that range. You're not going anywhere to really go somewhere and you've got a sell mode in the daily, sell mode in the weekly, and a sell signal, I have to wait for the end of the month, but right now it looks like a sell signal in the monthly chart, and that just says, 
the Bitcoin area is kind of stuck now in a trading range. And I'm going to draw this and say, I wouldn't be surprised if this is what we're looking at for the next, for most of, most of not all, but most of February. Stuck between 43,800s maybe. Now, of course, these things move so quickly on Sunday night, we could be right through that. That's actually what you want to see. Or if it pulls back, you've got probably 30 to 31,000 is major support. So I, that, that's what I'm looking at now. I don't mind changing my opinion, but that's what we're looking at. All right, crude oil. Question about crude oil. Bunch of questions about crude oil. Now, let's do this. So you had your upside channel. Chadwave inside track didn't repel the price. In fact, it's gone above that. It's still active as, a, as a, an important metric. Here it is now key support, just minor intraday support of 91.55 in the continuous contract. It's up 235 at 92.63. And what we're looking at is the, the on balance one in the blue line is overbought saying we're in for at least just a little bit of a pullback for that to come back down because it's overbought. But the stochastic of 91% and flat is fantastic. That's what you want to see. That is very bullish. And the line, yeah, this gray line, that's the... That is the relative strength index at a high, holding very nicely. Now, the weekly chart is just recently broken above. And can you believe that here we are on the um, week of the 3rd of December, two months ago, trading at 61.70. Today, we're at 92. You know, if I don't see why the newspapers aren't having this as headlines all the time, saying, did we do the right thing with the pipeline if we are now beholden to other countries, countries that we might be finding, other countries, is our own personal um, independence in the whole area of crude oil, which we are absolutely married to, even if we go battery, we're still going to have to use uh, uh, the petroleum products at some point. So I'm just looking at this as critically as I can, just to just to uh, talk talk about it as refer reference points of the chart. And what it's saying is, we we were doing very well. Look at this monthly chart of crude oil. Look at this. Um, Back into the low of, of uh, April of 2020, it actually went down to 7.61. We know the aberration that occurred there, but we've gone from 7.61 to 92. This looks like a this looks like a the old growth stocks. This looks like a high tech growth stock, but it's called crude oil, and it impact. It's like a tax on everything. So I, I'm giving this a little speech here because something has to be done. If this keeps going high, it's going to impact everything. I'll be back in a moment. Pastor Chef is seeing for Larry Pesavento. Dow is down on are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hello, folks, Basil Chapman using Larry Pesavento's trade work to see hour just to uh, show some of the charts based on my work. Uh, We're looking at leg D and uh, the fourth highest peak, leg D, we call it. That's where you've got to be a little careful, but it has broken out. So we're looking at this as, as really important. Why? Because it's decidedly higher at 93.17 than the 85.65 previous high. Once you don't stop at that level, like we just showed CVX stalled at the 137.00 round number high, it doesn't mean it can't go high. I'm just saying if there's a sharp pullback in CVX without taking out 137 for more than two days to the upside, then all of a sudden that becomes the barrier, that becomes a level to monitor as a key, key metric. What we are looking at is the crude oil, uh, the MACD in the monthly chart is fantastic. Stochastic is very good at 85. On balance volume is very good. Nine is way above the 14. And that's just suggesting that even on pullbacks, crude oil is in play for 2022, still at this time. Yep. The, 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 look how quickly you can move up and look how quickly you can move down. This is the area that I'm saying. At, at this point, we're going to see what happens by Wednesday of next week. If by Wednesday of next week, crude oil is trading under 84. That's that's quite a way down. Um, then we've got to look at it and say, okay, maybe it's made a short-term top. Okay, a couple of questions came in. Could I look at the TLT? Yep, the TLT is trading. This is bonds. Look, there's the rectangle formation. It went above it slightly, below it slightly, went above it, went back into the range. Now it's trading below it, which makes the 145 area very strong resistance over the intermediate term, looking at the weekly chart. Looking at the pattern that I call the dreaded H, remember the pattern? This is the pattern uh, right there, red, sharp red down, makes an arch and then takes out that left side low. We've got to be monitoring very closely this monthly chart because it broke above the falling X resistance briefly. Now it's under it. And now I have no choice but to put in a potential arch formation. And that says that yields are going higher. I showed that chart earlier. I don't know if I can do it again now. But look, this is leg B down in the daily ch in the weekly chart. The MACD is very weak. This is the, the weekly chart of the TLT. So the Castix down at 14% and showing no strength. Remember, this is the exact opposite of the upside. I love when you're trading above 80% and holding because price can keep going higher. It's exactly the opposite when you're trading under 20%, especially under, uh, if it can get to the 15% level, uh, under 15 is at 14.74. And staying there, it says it should go to the single digits. And that's just suggesting strongly that yields are going to go higher. So yeah, you are, you've broken down. This is the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. Uppercase A pattern looks like an A. Let me just draw that in for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. There it is. We do the A, and then I usually make it as big as possible and make it red format. Here we go. 
uh, red. Yep, we got the red right there. Let's make it font. Let's make it nice and big. 48, there we go. There we are. That looks like an uppercase A. Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. All right? And we broke on the left side low. This is the third week that we've gone below it. And it looks like we might close underneath the key net metric that I'm using the week of the 15th of October of 141.45. When Paul says, watch out for bonds. And, yeah, those yields, I mean, we're watching this very closely. This is the daily chart. So this is very important. You've got until Tuesday to close above 141. And if it does that, it says, okay, save by the bell. Now you can at least go sideways, try to rally a little bit. This is very important. And what we're looking at is the XLF, which is the financials <clears throat> benefit. It's not purely just the, the high yields. It is just the fact that you want to be looking at how do the high yields improve the outlook for the banks, and they usually do. The other things can, that's why each one's separate. If you look at, we still have real long Bank of America. Look at that, how nicely it's holding is up 1.2, 1.12 today at 47.55. We're in from the 31 area, still long. I like it a lot. Yep, there could be a head and shoulders eventually with the pattern of the peak D in the day in the weekly and the leg D in the monthly. So far, this is a nice play. I think I think it's going to stall soon, but uh, at this point, it's, it's doing very well. And, and so, a couple of things we're looking at. So, I want you to do this grains. Look, the Eiffel Tower that we just saw uh, in the T TLT. Wheat has just done that. It went to a peak D. Remember the fourth highest PPD is where we raised a foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake, yellow light caution. That's where you can turn down. And certainly from the continuous contract high of 876 back in uh, late November, it plummeted down to where? The 200 period moving average. Remember I spent some time yesterday talking about the importance of it. There's your Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down uppercase A, and let me just draw it as an A right here. Make this uh, nice and big. Make it red. Let's go all the way to 48. Let's make it red. Style. Click, click. Look at that. It took seconds. And you've got yourself a pattern that you can use as a viable entity in technical analysis. It's called the Eiffel Tower. Of course, if I called this something sophisticated, it would become the norm. But I call it always with nicknames, and that's the way it is. Uh, uppercase A, Eiffel Tower, whoop, whoop, comes down. Watch out because it's 200, the more you hit the 200 period moving average. Remember, Tom O'Brien likes to say, the more you hit the floor, the greater the chances are you're going to go through it. Um, so this is it. This is your floor. You're going to be real careful here. But wait a minute. What about soybeans? Well, soybeans are making two doji candles after the high yesterday. And I drew this in. Now, for subscribers, we, we don't trade these, uh, we don't do the futures in, in the, uh, in the uh, commodities, uh, the soft commodities, but we do, do we got the DBA, which is the DB Agricultural Fund from 1377, it's trading right now at 20.53, leg D in the weekly chart. So I just wanted to show you soybean, soybean is making this cup formation. How it retests is a continuous contract, so your price will be a little different. The pattern, everything else is the same, but it gets smoothed out. 14.25 and three quarters is the high the week of the 14th of May. It pulls all the way back, makes a beautiful cup formation. I drew this in as a, it isn't exactly a left side, right side price time match because it, it, the low is moved to the right. So you have to use a particular candle, which I did, and that takes you, you to around about somewhere in February before March. We should retest the high of 16.25 and a half made on the 14th of May. And then you've got to be careful. If we pull back next week and we go to leg D, peak D is where you had that pullback before. And then you can make a W formation. The big arch becomes a second arch. Or if it goes one penny, well, one in this case, if it goes one point above that high, you start a leg B in the monthly chart. The monthly chart now. Soybeans continuous contract made it. Remember, the fourth highest peak in the Chevrolet peak D is where other things can happen. Well, look at the peak D in soybeans going to the high of uh, September of, 20, of 2012 at uh, whatever that was, 1383. Pulls back sharply, starts a brand new buy mode, holds the 14, holds the 9. Look how that 9 was holding above. What a beautiful indicator. It goes to a peak D again back in uh, May 
2014, and then it starts going lower highs and lower lows all the way down to the low that was made in April of 2020 at 741. Remember, continuous contract, the price gets smoothed out. So that could become a leg B, and that'll be really bullish for soybeans looking out in 2022. And corn, as we go into the break, corn is in legs. The month. So I'll be back in a moment. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Hi, folks. So just before we wrap up, just a bunch of questions came in. So first of all, natural gas. Remember, yesterday I said peaked in the Chapman wave. The fourth highest peak is where you got to have moments of momentary caution. Look what happened. It, went, it pulled back and it's down again today, down point to 106 uh, at 4.78. Now, my suspicion is that if we start to see crude oil start to weaken next week a little bit, maybe we'll uh, look at natural gas starting to another move up. It's got the character. I love to look at the character of the price movement. Look at the weekly chart. Long wicks and it closes at lows. It does it so often. Most stocks don't do that. Most instruments don't. And this does it. And again, this and today. So what I would say is if you can see five point. 15 or 5.25 anytime Monday or Tuesday, I think it could start towards the upside. That's a, that's an important thing. Then a couple of questions about, uh, oh, the EUR. Did I do that? I did that in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour, in the first hour between 10 and 11. Yeah, the fact that it made one fractional high today of 1.14829 above the 1.14828 high of um, this around about the 15th or so of last month says to me that 
Euro could, in fact, move higher. This could be a brand new leg A to the upside. Can't ignore just that one fraction higher. So I'll talk about that more in my show coming up Monday. But the dollar is really the clue because if the dollar trying to find some kind of a base goes back into the rectangle, it could sort of meander to the side, maybe maybe slightly lower low, but basically move sideways. If the Dollar closes under 95, that euro is going to move. And then I think finally you might see gold actually pick up. I think those are the questions that I had. Then a quick question about will Bank of America go to the double top? That's what I said. I'm, I'm anticipating there's a good chance that it works its way towards the 48.50. I don't know about 50.08 in this particular move, but we'll watch it closely. The next thing was MRO, which we were long. We're not long anymore, unfortunately. It's fantastic. It looks like a leg E in the daily at 21. This is Marathon Oil. But it's only a leg C in the weekly chart, and that corresponds, look, to the XLE, if I remember correctly. Yep, leg C. So these and the whole energy sector has more to go to the upside. It is a leg E in the daily, so we might see a pullback. Looking out, though, I say look out. So have a wonderful weekend, everybody. And uh, thank you, Leg. I assume we're going to be sitting for you. And uh, we'll see you on Monday. I'm sure Larry will be back on Monday. Have a great weekend. Check out both. Thank you. Thank you.